You're listening to the Multiverse Fancast, proud member of the Misfit Faction Media Network. All right, then. On with the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Multiverse Fancast. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you get your podcast. You can also find more of our content on our website, themisfitfaction.com. There you find links to not only this show, but some of our other shows like Cinematic Adventures and MF Uncensored. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul. With me via his incredibly glitchy uh, Zoom studio is Ronnie. Ronnie, how are you today? I'm doing swell. How are you, sire? I'm doing all right, but I'm looking at your camera screen, and it is horrendous. You're welcome. No, no. We do uh, want to apologize no. to all you guys for a little bit of delayed production. We actually meant to record earlier this week, and we went, we like, we're in the Zoom and everything, but it just kept freezing and crashing on us. Like, there was no way for us to get it done. Like, Ronnie changed rooms. I can't move the podcast studio, so it was really all his <laughs> fault. But, yep. We wanted to make sure that we got at least something out to you guys. So, Ronnie, like, what, what's been going on with you? Not too much. I'm trying to think. Last time I recorded what happened mm-hmm. in my life. Not much. I think, oh, I ran a Ragnar. That's about all that's happened in my life in the past week and a half since we recorded last. Yeah, yeah. I've been too busy to hang out with me. It's fine. It's fine. No big deal. Yeah, you know. No. <laughs> well, let's let's actually catch up because people are here for superhero stuff let's catch up on some of the shows i know i know you have not watched anything recently i watched the first episode of loki all right so let's start with loki loki <laughs> dropped its brand new season it's i think at the time of recording they're about three episodes in producer melanie and i have been watching it we are thoroughly enjoying it it's we weren't sure what to expect you know we were kind of lackluster on loki season one but loki season two's got us a little bit more engaged we are we kind of flipped the script, though, and we really don't like Sylvie this season, which is very strange. No spoilers, though. Obviously, people yeah. are still watching it. We'll probably do a whole review on it when the season ends, and we'll do you know a full retrospect. But I, just initial thoughts on the first episode. I'm digging it. It does start off a little confusing, mm-hmm. but towards like the middle and end of episode one, like you kind of start to get like the premise of the show and what exactly is happening. Yeah, and it's a slow burn, but we'll see where yeah. it, we'll see where it goes. Have you watched any of Gen V yet? I have not. You are missing out. It is. I know. It is everything that the boys is, and it is wonderful. Producer Valerie and I have been watching it since the first episodes dropped, and we fell in love with it immediately. It is. All of the the violence and language and sex and gore and all the things that you expect from the boys just on a college campus, which was a little different than my college experience. But uh, yeah, but yeah. it is it is definitely firmly set in the world of the boys. The cameos alone, they've done some really good cameos. Not a sp- mild spoiler, but Jensen Ackles just cameoed in this last week's episode, and it was a lot of fun. But yeah, it's it is fantastic. You really need to get on that. I will. Don't you worry. I'm worried because you're not on it. Get on it, Ronnie. But I will. I don't know about that. But let's also, (laughs) I have to bring this up. As of recording, it is now October 25th, five days ago. The highest selling PlayStation 5 game of all time dropped with Spider-Man 2. Now, Ronnie, I know you and I were living together. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. not intimately, in case anybody's wondering, but we were renting a house. It was me, Sean from Cinematic Adventures, and Ronnie, and I would play the first Spider-Man pretty, pretty often. Sean had a PS4, and mm-hmm. he let me, he let me buy it. And I don't think you've never played any of the Spider-Man, like the new Spider-Man games, right? I have not. No. So, so I'm gonna do a, a quick little mini review. Just uh, I wanted to do a full article, but I haven't played, I haven't finished the game yet, and it'd be kind of silly. I'm about loser. Well, (laughs) unfortunately, my schedule is just as busy, if not more than any than you doofus run your races, (laughs) just run your races. But anyway, and take care of a four month old. You know what? Jackie's got to take care of a four month old and you. You know what? What? You're right. You know what else? (laughs) I can't gauge if you're laughing because your screen's so glitchy. So I'm not sure if I'm ever going to offend you, which small chance but possible so i i'm just it's really it's i gotta take a picture of this this is wild 
when in doubt, you're not insulting me that, that's, or offending me. That's <laughs> fair, but this is also going. This is definitely going to go on the uh, the Instagram page. This is oh, what, it has to. This is, uh, uh. I want to get like a really good glitchy one. Yeah, there we go. All right, here, <laughs> there it is. But anyway, I don't so, know why it does this. It's only with it's, you and me. It's got to be something. I wonder if it's like my camera. Like my my laptop is old. It's not even that old. It's probably like five six years old. Well, maybe you shouldn't have been using it for your webcam shows. All right, I know money was tight for a while, but you know, hey, twenty bucks is twenty bucks. Twenty bucks is twenty bucks. So back to Spider Man <laughs> Two. So it was released to, to high fanfare. Like everybody was talking about it. The the hype was exceptionally real. They were at New York Comic Con. Fun fact: Producer Melanie got to go to New York Comic Con through her job, which was a lot of fun for her. I had to work, so yeah, not jealous. Not jealous at all, everyone. Anywho, no. so there was a lot of hype, a lot of anticipation for this movie, or this movie, this game, and it has not disappointed since. It is fantastic. If you like the first game and the Miles Morales spinoff, A, you're going to love it, and B, they improved on almost everything from the gameplay to the story, the cinematics. The Mary Jane missions are fewer and further between, which nobody liked, but... It is so good. I have trouble putting it down. I have to like literally allot myself time to play. It's that bad. But so far, I'm giving it a solid four out of five. Probably even a four point five. It's it's probably gonna hit the five. Nice. It's probably gonna hit the five when I when I finish it. But yeah, mm-hmm. it is it is a good time. No alcohol required. But <laughs> we are here and we are talking about a character and a film and some other cartoons that the film is. God, it's bad. Yeah. I I love it, though. It's so bad. Yeah, like, it's one of those, like, it's so bad that you like it. Like but... like our friendship. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so, let's, let's, we're going to talk about the character first, and then we'll talk about the film, because I feel like we could really rip the film apart. So, we are talking about the character Spawn and his 19, 1997 film adaptation. Now, before the film, did you have any familiarity with Spawn? Not at all. Not at all. Not even a little. No. Hey, you stopped glitching. What? Did you move the camera? I so I kind of did. I actually angled my laptop top like back a little bit. Oh, okay. So it's a nice POV shot. Thank you so much. Anyway, no, it's very uncomfortable. I don't <laughs> like it. I, I, prefer- I just angle it more so you can't even see me. I think the glitching was actually preferred. But anyway, this is why we should do video sometimes. <laughs> but anywho. So Spawn came out, and he's he's a much more recent character. He was not a DC or Marvel character. I want to say he was set in the Image universe by Image Comics. Created by Todd McFarlane, Spawn first appeared in May 1992 in Spawn issue one. And Spawn is one of the very few characters that just kind of exploded outside of marvel and dc he was exceptionally Mm -hmm. popular still has a very loyal following and he's had movie he's had an hbo series series of action figures there is supposedly a reboot film starring jamie fox and jeremy renner on the coming out the gates but we'll see with all of that in fact i'm gonna pick that up right now because obviously we're still in the middle of the uh, the writers guild has settled their strike against Mm -hmm. hollywood and it's now the sag is now still yeah yeah so it's it's tough right so in early 2015 mcfarland announced that he was going to do a new spawn film adaptation which is great because uh, i don't know sometimes when the creator's like super involved it's really good Or it's not so good. Um, Yeah. Or years later, they make inappropriate tweets and suddenly Harry Potter's ruined for a lot of people. But anywho. So (laughs) in February 2016, McFarlane confirmed that he had completed the script for the film. And apparently he claims that it had a larger than normal page count because he's putting in the details for himself. So it seems like he also kind of wanted to direct, which again can be really good but also like you look didn't, at uh, didn't he did he direct the first one or no i don't think so the first or was one, he just involved in it he was definitely involved with it. it he was it was directed by mark dip dipe yeah a japanese born american uh-huh. film director yeah and okay. this was his directorial debut with spawn oh what a what a gem to start <laughs> with but yeah so 
it was announced that he would be directing the film, McFarlane, and it's being produced under Jason Blum's uh, production company, Blumhouse. In 2018, it was reported that Jamie Foxx would play the title character, which I can get behind. It's I, yeah. I, I, I hope he goes full Ryan Reynolds with it because the biggest concern when Ryan Reynolds was cast about for Deadpool was how much he was going to wear the mask. And yeah. obviously he he wore the hell out of that mask. Oh, yeah, he did. Let's see. In November 2019, the film restarted uh, development due to financial success of the Joker movie, of all things, because now oh. suddenly R-rated films can be exceptionally popular and, yeah. exempt- and make a ton of money. Let's see. Uh, in June 2023, Jason Blum announced that Spawn is aiming for a 2025 release date as of that time, or as of that time, there was no writers or actor strikes. So I'm going to assume, yeah. if anything, maybe 2026. But the uh, going back to the early days of Spawn, so I was not allowed anything to do with Spawn. He was one of those characters that, A, I didn't have access to. It's very different. Like, we, Ronnie and I are children of the 90s. And yeah. if you wanted a comic book, you had to go to your local comic book store and you had to buy one. And I was very familiar with your mainstream. I was not into the indie comic scene. And Ronnie has probably never actually picked up a comic book. But... I've I've picked them up. I don't know if I've read any, but I've definitely picked them up. You know, it's funny considering they're basically like almost coloring books for adults, like that you are not completely amused. So I don't know. Like I just, I never was big into reading as a kid. I could tell it wasn't until like I, <laughs> it wasn't until I was probably like in college really that I started to like actually enjoy reading. So that's probably why that I've actually never really read a comic book. Yeah, well, I'm still firmly of the opinion that you actually can't read and you're just really good at hiding it. Watch, one plus one is two. Okay, so we're we're gonna a lot to unpack uh-huh. there. We're gonna we're gonna circle back <laughs> later. But you ever, okay. weird side tangent. You ever see the movie Corky Romano? Yes. <laughs> There's a running subplot in that movie where the adult's older brother can't read and yeah. they finally confront him about it at the end and like it, it's really funny the, the the rest of it's not so much like it's a terrible it is a mm-hmm. terrible movie oh it's, horrendous it's when they really try to make chris Catan like an actual movie star but probably, probably worse than this movie i oof, oh, uh, <laughs> who'd win in a fight damn i would actually it depends on my mood if i if yeah. i like this this movie is reminiscent of movies like steel or yeah. like, uh, and I, not even Batman and Robin, like, because Batman, Batman and Robin is actually not that bad of a movie. You shut your mouth. Batman and Robin is a train wreck. I will never forget. I was eight or nine when that movie came out, and I still was like, I thought they only had 11 minutes to thaw the city. Why'd they all change? <laughs> they all got new cars, too. I want the toy. Ah, see? Yep. Warner Brothers uh-huh. knew what they were doing there. But anyway, 100%. so the character again was released in 1997 or 1991, and Todd McFarlane had been working on the character for a very long time, like very early, like a teenage Todd McFarlane was doing drawings of it. And so it's funny because this character still has an incredible staying power. We've seen him in, in movies and video games. I think he was in, he was in a couple of the Mortal Kombats, like as a playable character. Yeah. And of course, he was famously Wasn't voiced- he like Batman? Which Batman? Did, didn't he, or is it just the comics? He was in Batman. Uh, he's he's done a lot of crossovers. He did do a crossover in the comics yeah. with Batman. But let's see. He was in, these are all the video games that he's done. Spawn the video game on from 1995, Super Nintendo. It is wild to think that like only a couple of years after this character's debut, he was so popular that he was getting video games. Spawn the Eternal in 97 on PlayStation. Spawn 1999 on the Game Boy Color. Oh, my lens. Oh, I remember that. Yes. What color did you have? I had like the the clearish one that you could kind of see inside. Uh. We we went through a weird phase in the late 90s, early 2000s where we wanted to see the inside of the technology. Yep. I had a clear one, but I also had a green one. I also had a clear Nintendo 64 controller that was like everything was purple and you could see through it. Yes. Well, yep. I don't know what our fascination was, but we really enjoyed it in the <laughs> 90s. Let's see. Oh, this one's a deep cut. Spawn in the Demon's Hand 2000 Dreamcast. Oh. Oh. Uh, Spawn Armageddon 2003 came out for Xbox, PlayStation 2, and GameCube. 
Then he was in Soul Calibur 2. Soul Calibur is a very well-known fighting game, and they are very famous for bringing in characters. They, like they had Darth Vader and Yoda at one point, but it was like, I think Darth Vader was PlayStation and Yoda was Xbox or vice versa. So he had to get, you know, the console wars. Let's see. He was in Soul Calibur 2 HD Online, and he was in Mortal Kombat 11 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 in 2023 with Keith oh. David reprising his role. For those of you guys who don't know, Keith David is one of, A, my favorite voice actors. He famously did Goliath on Gargoyles. Did you ever watch Gargoyles? Yes. One of the darkest children's television shows of all time. They didn't give a shit. so good. I, I almost cursed. I forgot this was an MF Uncensored. By the way, check out a new interview. <laughs> just dropped today. But anywho, so this character has was known for its edgy, very supernatural horror type style, and that's also why it's Halloween. We wanted to yeah. do a we wanted to do a scary one. Also, weird side tangent. Did you see that they released Werewolf by Night in color on Hulu? I did not. I oh. I might actually watch it. We really enjoyed Werewolf by Night. I did too. I feel like it's going to be completely different in color. And I, oh yeah, yeah. I I completely agree. And also, I I was kind of I was kind of sad that they never did uh something for this year. Yeah, they sh- they definitely should have. They should have, but they didn't. And here we are talking about Spawn, who peaked in 1997. Some would argue. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so. Spawn saw a considerable popularity upon its initial release in the early 1990s, and comic book collecting had, take, had actually had a marked upswing at the time, fueled by the spec, speculator boom. All right, so comic book collecting is one of those those hobbies that goes in big waves, and when it goes mm-hmm. big, it goes huge, huge. You know, and that's going all the way back from 1938's Action Comics number one, Superman. Like, yep. it's wild. The comic books are one of those things that they're. They're more. They're worth more when the character involved is more popular. Like mm-hmm. I have an issue of the Incredible Hulk with the first pairs of Wolverine. It's in terrible condition, but like it's in prime condition after all the success with Wolverine. It's worth about six grand. Not too shabby. I would not get six grand for my copy of this, but <laughs> it's still really cool to have. So you go back and. McFarlane enjoyed a lot of status among comic book fans when he worked on Spider-Man. He did fantastic work on Spider-Man. I had a couple of his issues, and he was very – his art style was super unique, very gothic, very yes. dramatic, and Spider-Man was a really good canvas for him. And after he broke from Marvel and Image Comics was formed, it became a really solid competitor, one of the first in a long time. Like – Unfortunately, Marvel and DC own the. They still pretty much own the medium, but not as much anymore because a lot of those indie comics, like look at the boys. The boys is super popular. Yep. But uh, it's wild that the first issue of Spawn sold 1.7 million copies. And that's crazy. Yeah, like the second year it was its most popular selling comic, according to you. Ready for this callback? Wizard Magazine. <laughs> Do you remember Wizard Magazine? Yeah, yeah. I, I never like. I remember it. I never really like read it or anything like that. But because I mean, you it was couldn't read, just like a comic entertainment. Mm-hmm. Still yeah. can't. Still can't read. You heard it here first. But anyway, um, <laughs> so I will always think of Wizard for two reasons. One is Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. That's how they find out that the movie's getting made for them. See if you guys read yep. Wizard. Oh, ooh, shameless plug. But and then the second was. <laughs> They were the comic – or they were a medium in America that said – and they pointed out science that Goku could beat Superman in a fight. Yeah. Yeah. And that led to many, many of a, a painful fan debates. Oh, God. That is like – But it's not just your average Goku. It's got to be like – isn't it like the – top tier Goku? There even – it has been established by Death Battle twice – that Superman can beat even the highest level of Goku for simple, simple reasons. Pure writing. The writing of Goku and the <laughs> writing of Superman are vastly different. Superman can do anything if the comic book demands it. He sneezed away a galaxy once. He held yeah. a black hole in his hand because they said he could. He carried infinity. Infinity. Like Wonder Woman helped him, but you know what half of infinity is? Still freaking infinity. What? Yeah, no, I did the math on that one because I read, <laughs> unlike Ronnie. 
Anyway, hey. but that's also why I knew about Wizard going back. So yeah. the popularity of the franchise hit with the movie. Now let's talk about the actual character. Swan's mm-hmm. real name is Albert Francis Al Simmons. So Al Simmons. And he was born a very simple guy. Like he, that's the other thing. He's a very relatable character. He was yes. the second oldest of three children, and his dad was a, in the comics. His dad was a traveling salesman, and his mother was, of course, a devil worshiper. What? Why not? <laughs> yeah. So he enrolls in the U.S. Marine Corps. He retains the rank of lieutenant colonel, and he's serving with Force Recon. He later joins the Secret Service, becomes a high-ranking official, and is recruited by the CIA. Simmons later joins the U.S. Security Group, an umbrella agency encompassing the CIA, NSA, NSC, and commanded by director Jason Wynn, and he becomes a capable assassin because this was also the conspiracy era where comic books, everyone, everything had a government conspiracy part to it. Mm -hmm. And Ronnie's sitting there going, because aliens are real. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. If you guys are more interested in that, check out our Misfit Faction MF Uncensored Conspiracy (laughs) Month. We had some fun with that one. So, yeah, apparently Al gets betrayed and gets murdered and he gets burned to death and then sent to hell what a terrible way to die oh yeah a hundred percent i would like burn to death like how slow that is oh god and so painful yeah Mm -hmm. so after he gets to hell as one does in hell he makes a deal with the devil uh, oh my god malibogia and he becomes, sure, sure. I guess that's how you pronounce it. I want to say it was different in like the movie. I think they gave it like a like a different name, but yes. I'm not sure. No, same name. Damn it, Malibogia. Yeah, same name. Huh. Yeah, we're gonna whatever I say is what the name's gonna be. We'll just go with yeah. that. So he comes back as a hell spawn, and he's swear he swears ser- service to this demon, but he's allowed to see his wife one more time, and. He comes back with a terribly burned body, but he's wearing this new Hellspawn armor. The armor can do anything. It was, it was. I hate to say it, it's not true, but it's it's very similar to the Venom symbiote. Yes, and he is accompanied by a demonic guardian named the Violator. Dun, dun, dun. Nothing more '90s than a name like the Violator. And of course, you know what it, the Violator looks like, right, Ronnie? Looks like me. It looks like a clown. Oh, I was close, wasn't I? It is horrifying. <laughs> you hate clowns. I know. That's why I never watched this movie. I know. I know. But it's John Leguizamo. As, as I was going to say, it he's is so good. John Leguizamo. He but... chews that scenery like nobody's business, and it's so good. Oh, yeah. But uh, in the comics, when he comes back, he's got like limited memories of what he is. And eventually, he figures out who he was. And now, I guess his wife is married to his, his best friend. Uh, in the comics, his name is Terry. But I think in the movie, it was still Jason. And it's been five years since he died. So it's been a few... The same thing happens in the movie. He comes back a few years yeah. later. And his powers are fueled by necroplasm. And once they're depleted, he will return to hell. Not wanting to return to hell, he tries to find a new purpose in life while using as little power as possible. He's thrust into several anti-hero adventures, taking down street gangs and organized crime in New York City. And yeah, he's a very 90s, especially in the way that he looks type character. Yeah. What do you think of the look of Spawn? It's kind of cool because it's, like you said, it's kind of like like a venom kind of look, but with, like, claws mm-hmm. and a cape. Yeah. Because, I mean, you need to have a cape if you're a superhero, supervillain. So let's let's talk about that look of for him. So <laughs> he he has a very good look. I do like the, the comic look. His cape is yeah. almost sentient, though. It's very, like... Doctor Strangey. I wouldn't say Doctor Strangey, but yeah, I guess we're we're gonna go with Doctor Strangey. But it's <laughs> it's almost got its own kind of life to it. But it's yeah. very in the comics, it's very artistically done. Like it's it's always flowing, it's always moving, it's almost like a living being. And they tried to catch that in the movie, and yeah. so, sometimes it worked. Other times, it was a dumpster fire that was red. But anyway, and sometimes he didn't even have it. Sometimes he didn't even. Have, I think that was actually a smarter choice on their part to to have him yes. like retract. But anyway, so 
a lot of the the stories for Spawn are very religious in nature. Like he fights angels, he fights demons, he becomes God, mm-hmm. he doesn't. Like it's it's a lot. It's like he does a lot. There's a lot of weird in Spawn comics, but I I'm actually all about it. I love the supernatural type hero stuff. And again, he's mm-hmm. not tied to DC or Marvel, so it's a lot easier for him to kind yes. of play around and have his own lore. But uh, it's a lot easier for that. But at the same time, it makes things a little bit more challenging because you don't have that money to back it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and you kind of see that in the movie. Oh, yeah. But before we get to the movie, he we do have Todd McFarlane had a huge legal dispute with Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman of like Sandman fame, like very well known in the comic book community. And in 1993, McFarlane contact, contracted Neil Gaiman to write Spawn number nine. While doing so, Gaiman introduced the characters Cogliastro, who was in the movie. Angela and Medieval Spawn. All three characters were designed and co-created by Todd McFarlane and continued to be featured in the series after Gaiman's involvement and had some tie-ins with the toy company. Again, we mentioned Cogliastro had a role in... I can say that name for some reason really well. Yeah, right? Nailed it. He has a a role in the movie, and McFarlane had agreed that Gaiman was the co-creator of the characters and paid him royalties for reprints, graphic novels, and action figures. But after a few years, he ceased payments of the royalties and gave Gaiman notice that he owned all rights to the characters, citing the copyright notice from number nine, and claimed Gaiman's work had been work for hire and that McFarlane was the sole owner. Well, we all know where this went. In 2002, Gaiman filed suit against McFarlane, and in response, McFarlane countersued. And Gaiman had partnered from, with Marvel Comics from, to form Marvels and Miracles LLC, who bankrolled the assault, the, the, excuse me, the lawsuit, not the assault. And it was just a mess. Like, all, whenever comic book things turn into a mess, like, it just gets bad. And yeah. So let's see. Did yeah. it, was it? Uh, Price's co creator and co owner of Cogliastro's Angela and Medieval Spawn were acknowledged. The court views that Gaiman and McFarlane's collaboration led to each contributing half the work. Gaiman wrote the story while McFarlane illustrated the character. Because of this, he each held a 50% stake of the characters. Issue 9 was reprinted for the first time since the lawsuit and filed in a hardcore edition of Spawn Origins. All right. So they split it down the middle. And I'm sure. Yeah. Let's see. The issue was yeah. thrown out. Instead, the court chose to roll out in the breach of contract issue the rights of ownership and copyrightability of the characters from Spawn Number 9. Several arguments were presented by McFarlane, and all were rejected, leading to a sizable judgment against McFarlane and Image Comics. The matter went to appeal, and the judgment was upheld in a 2003 decision. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently there was another lawsuit, uh, the Tony Twist lawsuit. Tom McFarlane created a mob enforcer named Antonio Tony Twist Twistielli which McFarlane acknowledged was named after hockey player Tony Twist. Twist won a $15 million verdict in 2004 when a jury found Todd McFarlane Productions had profited from Twist's likeness. The verdict was upheld after two appeals in June 2006, and then they later settled out of court for $5 million. Cut it out, Todd McFarlane. Cut it out. All right. Now that we've talked about Spawn all the fun stuff like litigation you're welcome yeah been watching suits all week yeah oh such a great show i still can't finish it i I, I like the ninth season is not catching me but we'll talk about that another time don't distract me like that so in 1997 spawn at the height of his popularity gets his feature film debut directed by mark az dippy the film stars michael j white in a title role alongside john leguizamo martin sheen Teresa uh, Teresa Randall, DB Sweeney, and Nicole Williamson in his fi- Nicole Williamson in his final film role. So it follows pretty much the exact same origin story. Al Simmons is assigned yep. to infiltrate a biochemical weapons in uh, plant in North Korea. He gets betrayed because of his growing moral qualms about the nature of his work, and unfortunately, he is assassinated. But before he dies, he is set on fire, and the flames cause the plant to explode. He arrives in hell, where one of the rulers of hell. Malbolgia offers him a Faustian deal. If Simmons becomes the eternal servant and leader of his army in Armageddon, he will be able to return to Earth to see his wife. And he accepts the offer, and he comes back to Earth. Same thing. Five years has passed. Wanda is now married to Terry. Oh, so she is still married to Terry. I thought it was Jason. And is living as the stepfather to his daughter, Cyan. Spawn encounters a clown-like demon named Violator, sent by the demon or the devil, who acts as his guide down the path of evil. So it's it's not a bad story. No, it's it's not. It's just the way it's written and put together is what's bad. Then that makes a bad story. 
<laughs> Don't be like it's a bad. It's not a bad story, but the way that it's written, put together, and structured, no, 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 no. like the storyline and the premise of the movie, it's solid. Isn't bad. It's just this movie suffers by being limited at the of the technology at the time. See, yes and no, because like, so ninety seven. I feel like even like some of the shots, even for nineteen ninety seven, were a little janky. It, it, it was rough. So it had a budget of forty to forty five million dollars, and this was the time where it was PlayStation two graphics. Like that's what you saw mm-hmm. on the big screen. Famously, the Mummy Returns with the Scorpion King, woof. Mm-hmm. And that was just kind of the way that it was around that time, and it's unfortunate. I mean, in ninety seven, you had Jurassic Park. The Lost World. Mm-hmm. You had well, Men in Black. What else? Batman and Robin. Sh- shut <laughs> up with that. You need to stop. But I'm, well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, if you look at the quality, again, obviously not. I'm, I'm just talking about like effects and stuff like that. Like the quality from those movies, I feel like are a lot better. And it could just be because of budget, probably. I would say um, it's not so much budget. It's also the cloud of the studio. So this was yeah. distributed by New Line Cinema, who is fine, but it's not the yeah. it's not the it's not your Fox Studios. It's not your mm-hmm. now Disney. Like it's not. And this was a first time director. So yeah. there are a lot of factors that work against this film. Michael J. Mm-hmm. White is fine as Spawn. I think he does a fine job, and I like Michael J. Yes. White. He also played the role of. Oh God, Jax in the Mortal Kombat YouTube series. It was really good. Yeah, and um, didn't he? Wasn't he on in the Arrowverse? Michael J. White. Yeah, he was a Bronze Tiger. Yes, but so like he's he's got chops. I really do like him. Yeah, uh, and also John Leguizamo as as the Violator. Like he is fantastic in this movie. He like yeah. you wouldn't know it was him. They do a great job with the makeup on oh, him. Oh yeah, Martin Sheen. Martin freaking Sheen is in this movie. Yeah, that was that was the time of Martin Sheen. Like, you know? I, I can't. Like, this movie had everything going for it, but then it just, oh, man, did it did it not stick the landing? No, not at all. It definitely went to hell. Yeah. And, oh, shut up. You're so stupid. <laughs> so, let's see. The visual effects led New Lines to continuously increase the project's budget, which grew to 40 to $45 million, a third of which was spent on the effects. So, they did not plan for the effects, and then it, it got... Much bigger. Um, yeah. Yeah. So let's see. I'm just kind of, I want to see. Industrial Light and Magic did most of the work, which is crazy. Yeah. Oh, God. Let's see. The most difficult to sequences to render in the film included The Violator, Spawn's Digital Cape, and some of Spawn's transformations. That's why they also did not do a lot with him, like yeah. doing like crazy stuff. Like they do a good job with the practicality of it. Like his suit, like they'll show the transformation, and then it's like suction cup hands or something like that. Like, yeah. It wasn't bad. But it wasn't great. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to think. You want to do a Star City rating for this one? Did you like him better with or without his mask on? Depends on what he was doing. If he Mm -hmm. if he was doing one of like his monologues to like one of the characters and like the the glowing green eyes was a fun effect. I was all Mm -hmm. about it. But like if he was doing an action scene, I liked his mask on. Yeah. And, you know, it's obviously to me like like this is supposed to be like a scary movie in a way. Like mm-hmm. it's not it's it doesn't feel so much like comic booky. It seems more like sci fi horror to me. The HBO uh, series was much better with the horror aspects because it was HBO yeah. at the time, and it was like real HBO where you could you yeah you couldn't see stuff like that on regular television. And Keith David kills it. Like, you can watch clips, mm-hmm. and I think you can watch a couple of full episodes. I don't know if it's on any streaming service, but it is yeah. – it's really good. And Keith David, man, like, when he when he talks, you listen. He, I would love to see yeah. – if they do a reboot, if Jamie Foxx is the character, I would have no problem with them adding a voice effect to Spawn. But I would yeah. love – you know, as much as I hate to say it, Tony Todd, who just played Venom in the games, would probably mm. be an awesome – he played Zoom also. Yeah, I have no problem with when a character is masked up that they have a different voice. So like, voice modulators are not anything new. Yeah, and also like Venom's voice is different than Eddie Brock's, even though it's both Tom Hardy. But yeah. uh, Star City rating for Spawn. Oh, I've been debating this. I think I'm gonna go with a 
two. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to go with um, you. I'm going to go with the two. It is something if it's on, yep. if it's weirdly on, I'll put it on, <laughs> but I've never yeah. been like, I need to go watch spawn. No. And it, it's one of those, like I'll put it on and it'll be like background noise. Like I'm not going to sit and watch it, watch it. Like I, I also feel really... like if a superhero movie or an action movie in general is background noise, it's not a good movie. Action is supposed to be watched, not listened to. Yeah, and and this is because there's like really nothing in this movie that like makes me want to be like, oh, I want to watch it for this part. There's like one or two set pieces that I really enjoy, and obviously, mm-hmm. whatever John Leguizamo was on on camera, I can just he's, well, he's great. Yeah, I wish he had gotten his due, but anyway, so two for Spawn. Let's uh, wrap this up with fan feedback Friday with the release of Spider Man Two. What is the greatest superhero game ever made? All right, we actually had some nice, nice feedback on this one. Thank you, everyone. We have Arkham City. Sean from Cinematic Adventures, so send the hate mail that way, said (laughs) Superman Nintendo 64. Shut up, Sean. Shut up. (laughs) If you can't finish it because it's so glitchy, you can't say it. Here's a fun one. Producer Melanie, X-Men on Sega Genesis, deep cut, and I have a story to tell her about that. I totally forgot. We have Marvel (laughs) vs. Capcom 2, with also a side note of, there be the listener thinking our friend Anthony thinks that there's potential for a really sweet storm or Iron Man game. Iron Man's been done, but they have not done him well. Our friend Brendan blind bat 8719 Spider-Man for PS4 Batman Arkham Asylum. Our friend Mike for Budokai Tenkaichi. That's Dragon Ball Z. And that's such a deep cut. And I love it. Our friend John from Hey Pal, what's new said Fester's quest followed by ET on the NES. Shut up, John. That's actually really funny. Though. <laughs> and my sister jumped in on this one, Crystal wow. Pony, Crystal Pony on Sega, because superheroes come in all different ways. And <laughs> we used to play that game, and it was the hardest game. It was so Sega Genesis games did not hold back. And yeah. our, our good friend Alex wrote, since I took his answer, I'm going with the X Men arcade game by Konami. Solid, solid reference. Mm, yeah. All right. Thank you guys for joining in on Fan Feedback Friday. If you guys want to participate, it's super easy. All you have to do is go to our Facebook page every Friday between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We drop our Fan Feedback Friday, so make sure you guys participate. And also, if you guys want more of our content, we're on all the social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all the all the fun things, all the things the kids are doing right now. Just type in the Multiverse Fancast or the Misfit Faction. Odds are you'll find some of our stuff. But I think, Ronnie, I think that's going to wrap us up for today. You betcha it is. So I want to I want to thank you for taking time out of your super busy running around schedule. Thank you. No, thank you no, for no, no, making no. your time. Thank you for your service. I appreciate it. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> All right. That's going to wrap us up. As always, I'm Paul. I'm Ronnie. And we'll be back in a flash. See ya.